going on guys, Jack Knight 5 Gamer here and I'm back with episode 68 of my Queen's Park Rangers career mode. We kick off the episode here with West Ham agreeing the price for Young Sook Young of 2.1 million and it looks like the left back will be going out of the club and joining the East London side. So, we go into another transfer deal for Yaya Toro, we've got knocked back, let's say between 10.3 million and 13.6, so offer 6.5 and Sandro and hopefully we can get that deal done. We're not giving up on Anthony Marshall just yet, we offer 2.5 million plus new Mazart. Hopefully that deal can get done there and we can move on from that. We're also going for Papa Mission Digibolgi Dilio Boji. Dilio Boji? Dilio Boji. I think you say his name but 2 million plus corker. We're going to see if we can get this new centre back into the club. Fernando. A DM 24 years old from FC Ah, oh, Shakhtar Donetsk, that's the one. Sandro plus 6.5 million again also for his services and we'll see if we can get him into the club. He looks like a decent player. Jonathan Gies, now a German young centre defensive midfielder who I've heard good things about. So we offer Ebersilio plus 4.2 million for his services. Can we get him into the club? We'll have to wait and see. He could be a massive signing for us. We go into our game now. It is the final of the European Championships. It's England versus Spain. There is our bench. Makes up some really good players there. The starting lineup is what we've been going with throughout the whole of the knockout stages. Delphin Henderson come in. Henderson comes in for the injured Jack Wilshire. But well, unfortunately, he's out for three weeks after picking up an injury in the last game, which is uh, rather disappointing. So it's Spain versus England. It's going to be an incredible game, guys. I don't know that about that. Spain, hot favourites, but England looking to capture their first bit of uh, international silverware for quite a long time. I believe 40 years, so... Or oh, 50 years now, 60 years. It may be even, I don't even know how long it's been, but it's all for that trophy right there. Can we make history against a really good Spanish side? We didn't get to see the lineup, it didn't show it yet again, but there's their team. You know, a very strong midfield and a strong attack. This could be a really good game and a really good defence. My Spain are just good all over the pitch, and it's going to be a very hard game to try and knock them off their perch. But let's get into the game. The couple minutes in, it would be us making a good start. Kyle Walker paces David Alaba really well there, really lays it off into Raheem Sterling, he gets his shot away, and we're talking about inches wide there. But it's a good start from England, good positive, and uh, hope we can push on from that attack. Sterling then plays in Danny Welbeck, who's got the run on Martinez and Ramos. Here comes Welbeck. Surely that's 1 0, but a great save from Lopez denies us. Game remains at deadlock. Good opening 10 minutes into this game. As Sterling picks up a loose ball from a corner here, it falls all the way into Gary Cahill. Gary Cahill plays in Jordan Henderson. Jordan Henderson gets some space. He plays it back into Delft. Great opportunity, but Delft hits it straight. The goalkeeper gets cleared away. It's now the Spanish just turn to attack. Fabregas finds Pedro back into Fabregas. Fabregas gets taken down, but Spain will keep onto the ball as Fabregas plays Costa. Costa shoots. Great save from Joe Hart. Well back now. England on the counter attack. Daniel Sturridge. Sturridge gets away from Ramos, who completely wrong foots him. He's got the Marcos on him. Wrong foots the Marcos, plays it into the oncoming Sterling. Here comes Raheem Sterling onto the ball. Does really well here. Here comes Sterling back into Rooney. Rooney shoots, and that should be 1 0 there. But Lopez has been incredible in goal for the Spanish, opening 25 minutes into this game. We win the corner though, we're going to whip this in one in with Wayne Rooney. Rooney puts it all the way into the box to find Daniel Sturridge, but again, a fantastic save from Lopez with the nice from scoring. It's still 0 0. Comes to the end of the half now and the Spanish come on the attack. Suzuto finds Costa. Costa finds Pedro. Pedro finds Iniesta into Costa. Suzuto makes some space for himself. Plays it into Mata. And that would have been an incredible goal from the Spanish if they would have found the back of the net there. But into the second half. Start the second half. World bit plays in Rooney. Through on goal. Rooney 1-0 to the English just after the half-time whistle blows. England have their breakthrough. And it is from Captain Fantastic himself, Wayne Rooney. Who is actually incredible on this game, guys. I can't stress that enough. He's one of my favourite centre attacking midfielders to play with. And if he was a little bit cheaper, I probably would have bought him for my Queen's Park Rangers career mode because Wayne Rooney is an absolute revelation. He is actually brilliant, guys. I actually cannot describe how good he is in that centre attacking midfield role. He is brilliant. But we have his fourth goal of the European Championships and England have the lead in this final. And uh, we come on the attack again as Rooney picks out Sturridge. Sturridge plays into Henderson, back into uh, Sturridge, into Welbeck now, sorry. Welbeck does really well as he gets away from his man. Gets his body open and that really should have been 2-0 there. But now it's time for the Spanish to attack again. Albert onto the ball. Looks like something works as he plays it into Costa. Costa crosses it into Iniesta, headed away. It's a muck up in defence. It falls to David Silva, the substitute, who gives the Spanish uh, back on terms there. It's 1-1. The deadlock is back. And it is David Silva, Manchester City's, or oh, Borussia Dortmund, David Silva, should I say. What a finish that is there. And um, Joe Hart, no chance against his former teammate. Three goals now in the European Championship for David Silva. The game remains at 1-1. They win a corner now, the Spanish, as they get in looking to get back into the game. 
Silva misses the header, it falls to DeMarcos. DeMarcos onto the ball, plays it into Alba. Alba finds Iniesta, who finds Isco. It's off a deflection, Pedro hits the post, and England get the ball away. Danger cleared, and we are in real trouble here. As we bring on Theo Walcott and Ross Barkley for Sterling, and I believe Wayne Rooney. The captain comes off. Bold movement, as he's been so good for us. But Ross Barkley picks out a great ball. It's a Danny Welbeck there. Welbeck's through on goal. Surely Danny Welbeck, he misses. What a save that is from Lopez. Falls to Theo Walcott, he hits it across the defender, and he gets cleared away. What a great start from Ross Barkley is. He's on the ball again. What can Barkley do? Links up well with Welbeck. Welbeck back into Barkley. Ross Barkley, top caller, 2-1. Could have the lead with just a minute left to go plus extra time in this game. We are on the verge of winning the European Championships and look how much that means to the England boys there. Everyone surrounding uh, Ross Barkley for the celebrations there and look at that. We are on the verge of being crowned European Champions. What great play from England there. Uh, Spain, they put up a good fight you know but in the end they was really unlucky they've hit the post but we've had our chances to score too and Ross Barkley was not going to let that chance get away from him. What a finish that is from Ross Barkley. And, you know, he, he, it's his third goal in the competition in about three appearances. He has been a revelation. I really like Ross Barkley too, compared to uh, your likes of Wayne Rooney. So maybe Ross Barkley, you know, we've inquired about him. Maybe we can get him into the team as he plays through Daniel Sturridge here. Ross Barkley, again, he's here, there, and everywhere. Welbeck and Sturridge link up. It's Welbeck, uh, Sturridge, can you get there ahead of a. Uh, <laughs> he gets ahead of a, a poor defensive mishap there. He puts in some back in there. England are the European champions. Make no doubt about that. 3-1. And it wouldn't be a win without Daniel Sturridge getting onto the score sheet. Barkley and Sturridge celebrating. These two could be teammates in the near future too, which is a really weird thing to see. But look at that. What finish that is from Danny Sturridge at England are the European Championships from a defensive mistake from the Spanish. That is it wrapped up. 3-1. No chance for Spain to get back into this one. That's the second goal in European Championships. And we are the champions, guys. What a performance, what a brilliant, brilliant day this is for English football. We've ended our hurt. Obviously, it's not the World Cup, but it is the European Championships, which is equally just as good if you ask me. And look at that, Joe Hart has got a lot to celebrate for. He was incredible. Ross Bartley, when he came on, was brilliant. The whole team was just outstanding, and you know, they were just a credit to play with this whole tournament. Phil Jones, obviously, coming to Queen's Park Rangers now. He's that, he's that player. And it's good to see him uh, performing really well in you know, those. Gravel Morrison, West Ham boy, he has been incredible too. Gary Cahill has, uh, he's going to lift up the title here. It should be Wayne Rooney, but obviously I took Rooney off, which in hindsight I really shouldn't have done that. But, you know, Gary Cahill is going to lift up the European Championship. It should be Wayne Rooney. He's had a fantastic tournament, but it doesn't matter. You know, all that matters is that we are the champions. And uh, we're going to cherish this moment. Uh, Jack Rodwell didn't get on the pitch as much as I'd like him to, but again, he was brilliant too. And uh, Jack Wilshere too, uh, obviously attitude to injury, but he was great. And look at that, we are the champions. Gary Cahill celebrates and the England fans are all uh, jubilant there on their travels in Paris 2016. What a performance this is from the boys. And I'm definitely, like I said, I'm over the moon for them. And you know, we do get a little bit of European success then, I guess you could say, in this tournament. Because obviously I am the king of Europe, you could say now. Could uh, England the king of Europe? Or would you class the European Champions League as the King of Europe? I'm not too sure yet, but it has been a fantastic competition for all of us there. And look at that, that's a picture to cherish. Jermaine Defoe was incredible too in this competition. 13 shots to Spain, 7. They don't have possession, would you expect the Spanish to do? But they love seeing the ball. They love seeing the lock the ball too. Um, pass out, we'll see again the Spanish was on top. Diego Lopez picks up man and match with an 8.8 .8 rating. He was incredible in goal for the Spanish. And no Casillas in net. Which uh, really did surprise me, but Lopez did put up a good fight. But you know, the three goals were unjust, but we were just better than the team. We were the better team. Well, I think we both equally had uh, difficult ways to get to the final. I think we had the hardest one. You know, when you get Denmark and Switzerland, Switzerland was definitely harder than Denmark, let's be honest. And uh, but Germany definitely harder than uh, Belgium, obviously, the world champions. But we go into contract negotiations with Alan Hadjovic. The transfer business doesn't stop, even though we are the champions, we can't have a break because we've got to go straight into. Um, our career now, you know, we've got straight working into transfers for a new season and Sven Bender, we're getting to contract offer with him, 120k a week, a five year deal and hopefully he will be accepting that and coming to the R's. As you can see, we need more funds here, so I asked for some more funds from the board. 3.5 million I go for, win the league title, reach the final and reach the quarter final of Europe and hopefully that gets done and uh, we get that deal in. But we do go in for a deal for 
Ross Barkley. I kind of ruined it, but you know, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't contain myself. 1.5 million plus Yuri Tillemans for Ross Barkley. Hopefully, we get him in to the club. He could be a fantastic sign for us if we get him in. And as you can see, West Ham uh, do um, get the services of Young Suk Young, and we sell him for 2.1 million. Uh, sad to see him go, but I wish him all the best. We're going for a deal now for. Kieran Trippier, our last one, 2 million plus sound buy. I'm not going any higher than 2 million for Kieran Trippier. And hopefully we get that deal done. Uh, Digi Bodgy, Dilio Bodgy, um, Digi, uh, Digi O Bodgy, we get here 50 grand a week, 4 year deal, and hopefully he will sign a new contract and that will spell the end of Stephen Corker. William Carvalho now, we're looking to get him into the club. We get an offer accepted for him, 50 grand a week, we go for a 20% bonus per goal and a 5 year deal. Hopefully William Carvalho can come into the club there and we will get an offer accepted for Ross Barkley, from Everton, 70 grand a week. We offer him a 15% bonus per goal, a five uh, year length contract and a crucial first team player. And hopefully Ross Barkley will be interested in that. Alan Haliovic accepts the offer and we get him into the club. We'll see all their stats in the new squad report guys coming out in the next episode. As you can see, QPR accept, well no not QPR, we accept sorry, the um, puppy mission Digiobolgi accept him into the club. William Carvalho will get him into the club too. That's three, four new signings actually should I say, or three. I believe it's three. And that is three brilliant signings, though, that definitely make the team so much more stronger. Sandro is gone too uh, for that William Carvalho deal, might I add. Ross Bartley into the club too for Yuri Tielemans. That's a good signing too. Ross Bartley's an incredible player, and I can't wait to play with him during the, 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 the domestic season, should I say. We get also go into contract negotiations with Burnley over Kieran Trippier. This could be a good deal for us, as we are offering him a contract deal. A five-year deal to see him here till he's 30, and hopefully that'll be a good enough deal for him to stay. Uh, Sporting coming for Simone Scuffett. We reject that offer politely and uh, hopefully we won't be losing him. We do send David Pereira, the centre back, out on loan to York City and see how he does there. Hopefully he has a good season and comes back a lot stronger. Uh, we'll send Pierre Emil Hoiberg on loan also to Burnley. Try and sweeten the deal for us getting Kieran Trippier and hopefully uh, Hoiberg bounces back after the injury hit season he had last season. But we'll go into a, a new. Uh, Contract negotiation trip. We want to know his squad role, so we offer him that one and hopefully he accepts that. But the guys, that is going to bring an end to this episode. We'll see the transfer business rounded up and pre season starts next episode. If you did enjoy the episode, guys, as always, hit that like button. I really do appreciate it. And if you feel like I deserve a subscribe, then why not hit that subscribe button? You know, um, I'll, I'll appreciate it. And, you know, I, I upload FIFA content every single day except for on a Sunday. So, yeah, uh, there that is. But as always, have a really nice day, guys. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.